Hey, Ian. Second hey, time Paul. in a row, gate crashing the Ian cast again. Uh, by popular demand, a uh, number of comments on YouTube that we could have a million, million views if, if we stream this live daily. We just put ourselves on YouTube and live stream it. Maybe one day we got to consider that. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. So uh, from last Friday to this Friday, what is the market up? I mean, you know, it's up a lot. It's Yeah, it's up over 10%. I think 12% at last look this week. All right. So um, last week we went on and we were talking about liquidity, talking about why stocks can rise. And, uh, and we've seen that. So, I mean, uh, some of the moves in the, in, in the Dow and some of these stocks that used to be blue chip stocks, you can't really call them that anymore if they're collapsing 50, 60%. Right. Something like Boeing up 90%, Ian. 90% in, I believe, three days. Right. Yeah, but it was down, you know, 80-some percent before that from the high. So. Right, right. And, and the airlines bouncing huge. Uh, and in many ways, like, I, I don't know, the hotels, I don't know if you checked out the hotels, probably doing yeah. the same thing. Yeah, no, it's all the same pattern. And cruises, the same, kind of like the travel, just the whole travel sector has been... Right. Yeah, it's a lot of short covering this week. That's I know that's what the discussion we've been having is a short covering, uh, and I agree with that. Which is that a lot of this is a short covering, um, and and maybe some sort of I don't know some bottom fishing going on in some of them. Right. Yeah. It does I mean, look yeah like a lot of stocks have bottomed. Yeah, I mean, and you know, it was becoming pretty clear from like you know just like. Now, in our investment meeting, we're talking, I was talking about the rubber band, like, you know, there's like this rubber band effect, which is like, you know, even on the upside when it pulled too much and for sure now we can say in hindsight, but, but we did have a chat that like Apple and Microsoft and some of those tech names were really like out of whack Yeah. in, in, in February. Right. Yeah. And those are the, you know, those are the stocks that are at the top of the list for the S and P 500. They make up a big part of that. They make up a big part of the NASDAQ, um, the NASDAQ 100, which is followed by a lot of people. Um, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft make up, I think a third of QQQ, which is the NASDAQ 100 ETF, um, which is like widely regarded as a proxy for the NASDAQ. So in reality, only three stocks really command most of that. Um, so when you see the NASDAQ 100 or things like that, there's a lot of stocks behind the scenes that might be up, even though you see the index as a whole is down. And that's what we've been seeing, um, you know, for the latter part of last week and Monday, uh, the, the NASDAQ was down, the S&P was down, but a lot of the stocks that we follow, like uh, solar stocks, um, you know, Sun automation lines. stocks, things like that. Yeah, the way they were all bouncing for days before the market started to come back up. So Micron reported, uh, and in a kind of way, they're giving the all, all clear for the semis. In other words, so this is the second company after AMD saying, whatever anybody's thinking about it, even post coronavirus around the world, they're seeing enough order flow or they're hearing from their, from their customers that once this ends, uh, they want a product. Out right. There. Yeah, and we're seeing strength in uh, the the semiconductors ETF and and that index. Yeah, well, you're, yeah, exactly. You're not seeing a slowdown in you know most kinds of industries. It's really mainly you know like the leisure and travel industries and restaurants and things like that. It's not you know like the core industries like you know industrial production might take a very very temporary hit. Semiconductors are barely going to take a hit. Um, so a lot of these big industries that we follow aren't really going to be super affected by this, like for very long, if at all. And Micron and AMD are just the first companies that we've seen come out and say that. So one of the things that we've been talking about is, you know, hey, so, I mean, how can the S&P 500, for example, or the Dow, well, the Dow, forget the Dow, and that, that has to be reconstituted right. uh, for that to really, you know, eventually catch up. And I believe that it's been laggard for like a long time against the NASDAQ, I believe. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, so forget the Dow that that can't catch up, but the S and P 500, like we were talking about how it can catch up and we're talking about how a cap weighted index moves. Yeah. And so how could the S and P 500 at some point in time 
start to lift up, even if sort of Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, we still think is part of the new world, part of America 2.0, is going to continue to get bid up at some point in time. This, I, we believe there's enough demand to push that higher. Google is the same, mm-hmm. Facebook, uh, Netflix. However, Apple and, and, and Microsoft, I, I feel like it, they probably have peaked. And, yeah. and so it, many people will be wondering, and we should go through this, like how, you know, the indices can sort of repopulate themselves where stocks that are rising will start to take a larger and larger weight in the index. And we're talking about this, which is that as those two stocks and even others go down, it very naturally lifts the weight of other things up. Right. Well, and they, then, what's yeah. That? It's these smaller companies, you know, that are taking market share away from the companies that were leaders, but now this whole new set is emerging. And, you know, it takes time, but it's just companies taking that market share. So people are selling Apple. They're going to buy into something else. They're not probably not going to buy in to Apple, at least what they had before. Same with Microsoft. Um, so it's just a kind of a way, a new wave of companies that are slowly but surely, and probably the, the rate is accelerated that they're taking that market cap. Right. And so there's a very natural process since a huge amount of money goes into index funds from 401k plans, from pension plans and stuff like that, which is that as the weights of Apple and Microsoft get smaller, the other ones are getting bigger. In other words, they're starting to attract more and more money as well. Right. And so as that happens, slowly over time, they will start to represent a larger and larger part of the S&P 500. Uh, and presumably at some point of the NASDAQ 100, they, maybe they have to reconstitute as well. Maybe, you know, it's just a uh, hundred fixed companies or maybe it's based on cap weighted. However, the NASDAQ 100 has got Delta, American Airlines, Swiss one, I last check, like they have a lot of like really old kind of companies in yeah. there. Right. And so if those, maybe those have to be reconstituted as well. So we were saying like last week, which is like, you kind of have to like really be careful about thinking about the market. And this is a time really to be focused on stocks, like single stocks, and to be very focused on, in our judgment, America 2.0 stocks. And we know it's going to be super tempting to want to bet the bounce on a lot of different stocks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, into those, you know, like Boeing and that kind of stuff, because you see it's down 80%. You might get a short squeeze like we've seen this week, but it's not going to last yeah, exactly. Because I mean, the the cycle in our judgment on uh, commercial airlines is is probably done, uh, and those cycles run a very very long time. And who knows by the time I don't know the next uh, cycle sort of works out, like what cool stuff we'll have. Maybe we'll have air taxis and autonomy, and right. you know, the business model for for all of it could could change a great deal. Uh, so uh, we would we would tell you that focus on America 2.0 stocks. And if you're looking for what to buy, well, you've come to the right place. Uh, we have a number of services. Ian runs a two amazing um, option-based services, Rapid Profit Trader and Rebound Profit Trader, as well as $10 million portfolio, um, uh, which is a stock service that focuses on special situations as well as uh, special purpose acquisition companies. I got that right, Ian? Yeah. Yep, that's it. Uh, and then also other companies sort of, um, uh, the, the gateway though, to get in is to like join, uh, our flagship service to our profits unlimited, uh, focuses on sort of mid large companies, but focusing exclusively on fourth industrial revolution companies, new, uh, America 2.0 companies, click on the strong hands above takes you to a page, which then will also give you a link to my video presentation on America 2.0, what the opportunity is, what it represents and why I believe that now Ian has got to be one of the greatest times to get in because stock prices have gone down almost yeah. in a straight line. They've recovered some. However, we think they're going much, much higher. Oh, yeah. Across like every industry, there's disruption. It's like it's kind of an unprecedented type of time that we're living in right now. And there's such a huge shift going on. And this whole like coronavirus market crash has, you know, really accelerated that transition in the market from old world companies to new world companies. And we're already starting to see that uh, just from the rebound this week. We believe this isn't like a fluke. This is something that's going to be sustained. Right. And, you know, and I've talked to folks about my Sticks trade, S-T-I-X-X, that's five ETFs. Or, you know, and check our, our YouTube channel. And while I'm mentioning that, 
Uh, follow Ian and I on Twitter. Uh, t what's your what's your Twitter handle? Uh, uh, so I, I, at Ian Dyer Guru. And I am at Manpilly Guru. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up. Comment below, uh, like many of you folks already do. Uh, we've talked about you know semis. We've talked about solar battery. We've talked about housing, which is a cyclical play, which is taking a little bit of time to rev up. Uh, I've also told people about sort of biotechnology. And we were discussing sort of what we think is going to capture market share from where it sits today, which is in these old line pharmaceuticals like Pfizer and Merck and Lilly. And we're talking about molecular diagnostics. And, you know, yep. there's an entire group of companies uh, that we think can really soar higher. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... So this is an opportunity that I think very few people really get. Um, and we've done trades in a number of these. However, uh, we've done some trades in actually our option service in one of my stock services called True Momentum. And this is the kind of thing, Ian, like, which is that there are entire new industries in a way that are forming that the vast majority of people really are not focused on at all. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of these companies have not been around very long. Um, so like any, any company that's going to be taking on a big thing at once, they're not showing a profit yet. So the argument for companies like Uber is a great example of that was they're not worth anything because they're not making a profit. Why are they worth, you know, $50 billion or whatever they are right now. Um, but they're taking over so many different areas of the market right now. Um, it, all, all over the world and they still have they said they came out and said they had cash reserves to wait out this um, kind of coronavirus scare so it yeah they don't make profits but they're a new company that's like transforming the way that we get from place to place they're in you know food delivery they're in all these kind of things and they're just one example of that of how uh, the dynamic of the market is kind of changing but people don't want to admit it yet but the, if you do buy into that, the upside from here is really, really huge. Right, and that, that's part of my stuff trade, which uh, we'll leave a link below, uh, a free report on stuff. That's my acronym, um, which is second acronym. I like acronyms, which is Spotify, which everybody is probably streaming right now while yep. at home. Uh, uh, so I use like, it every day, yeah. Right, exactly. I mean, so that's like a disruption of media which yep. we respective of what, you know, before people might use it in their car. Now there are people using it in their home. Uh, yeah. Then there's Tesla, which represents disruption in three industries, um, uh, transportation, mobility, uh, uh, energy in terms of like, you know, replacing oil uh, and carbon based. And then also, the utility business by its battery uh, and also solar panel business, uh, which is in there. So three different businesses. Uh, and then there's Uber, which for us is also mobility, autonomy. Uh, it's in there. And obviously they're, they're in the logistics business through their Uber Eats business. And Facebook, which disrupts media. I mean, you know, people are Instagramming like crazy what they're doing at home. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we were just talking the other day about how before long you're not even going to need to have like a phone plan because you're just you can message people across the world from like Facebook Messenger. You can call people on Snapchat, on Facebook. And, you know, what's the point once we have kind of, you know, like the satellite Internet? Um, what's the what's going to be the point of having a phone plan? So Facebook's going to capitalize from that down the road, too. It's not just, you know, a social media site at this point. Right. So, I mean, just to bring this like to, together, I mean, there's kind of like two things going on in the stock market right now. And many people probably are focused on the fact that the Dow is going up, the S&P is going up, and obviously the Nasdaq is going up. However, there's a, a kind of shifting of tides going on between old and new world and where some people are for sure going to go bet on old world companies. However, the tide is washing in for new world companies that are going to recover and then make new highs exactly yep yeah while the other ones are kind of still lagging behind um not quite at new highs or you know they could stay around this level nobody thought like a few years ago that macy's would be at an all-time low right now or ge would be at an all-time low or at least like a multi-decade low um so it really can happen way faster than people think that these companies really are kind of sold out there's no demand left for the stock it, it can happen in a very, very quick period. And that 
this whole um, the whole sell off really accelerated that. And then equally, the opposite can happen as well, which is that I remember in when uh, Tesla first started to like get comments like, "Why does Tesla have a bigger market cap than General Motors or Ford?" Yeah. And so stock market investors anticipated uh, what Tesla was uh, trying to build and start to give it credit because they start to discount or price in the future well ahead of what the, what the facts were at the moment. And people said it's a bubble, it's stupid, it's idiotic. Uh, however, today, uh, it's pretty clear that Ford is unlikely to have the resources to compete with Tesla if EVs yeah. uh, are going to be the way of the future, which it certainly looks like it is to us, or that autonomy is going to be the way of the future. Exactly. Yeah, that's another thing that Tesla is disrupting is autonomy. You know, they have, they already have like a, a semi-autonomous cars that they're putting out in the market uh, with their autopilot. So they're way ahead of everybody, not just in electric vehicles, but in autonomous cars too. And this coronavirus kind of wipes out the vast majority of internal combustion engine car makers who no longer right. have the resources to compete. Right. Yeah, because Ford was, uh, uh, I believe, downgraded to junk. In other words, it's going to be very difficult for them to raise money. GM is in a weakened state. The European automakers in a weakened state. So uh, that gets us to, you know, what's something we discuss, you know, every week, which is Tesla, which is that they've got cash. Uh, they've got rising yep. growth. And all three parts of their business uh, are growing. Yeah, yeah fast awesome. too. Yeah, they're growing at increasing rates. And they just started their solar roof sales. Yeah, and to bring this, I mean, we're still bullish, optimistic, positive bop, as I like to put on, uh, on, on Twitter. That's my hashtag that, that I created, bullish, optimistic, positive. Uh, on America 2.0 stocks, I mean, we want to make it clear, we are not optimistic on stocks like Boeing or ExxonMobil, uh, others, uh, Ian, that we should just mention offhand. Um, you know, the airlines, the hotels. Right. At Ford, like you mentioned, GM. Right. I mean, and, you know, we have, as part of uh, the America 2.0 uh, uh, promotion, uh, if, if you decide to subscribe, you get two reports. One is on an amazing, incredible, very disruptive stock that we believe is the future of manufacturing. Uh, and the second is this blacklist report that gives you all the stocks that we have compiled. These are the stocks of the old that when we put it out, and it was in early January, Ian, uh, yeah. truthfully, a lot of people said, really, Paul, Apple, you're really going to put Apple on the blacklist? Um, really, you're going to put ExxonMobil? I got quite a few questions on, you know, because these are the old blue chips. Yeah. Yeah. And they're kind of fading. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, especially ExxonMobil and these other oil companies. Um, I think the XOP, which is the oil ETF, is like like 50% below its prior all-time low. Yeah. And then one way for people to see old versus new is just look, the old world stocks are making something like what? Three to five year lows, something in that yeah. range? Well, right. yeah. More than that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the stocks of the new world are making lows. However, at worst, it might be a 52-week low. Right. right. Exactly. At worst. Uh, oftentimes, it's a six-month low. It's a nine-month low. In other words, they've given back the gains of the last two or three years, but they haven't given them all back and then some. Yeah. I, and I think the Dow was down back to where it was in like mid-2016 at the bottom of this uh, sell-off. Right, right. And the NASDAQ composite is not. Oh, even yeah. the NASDAQ 100 is not. So we're incredibly bullish on our stocks and America 2.0 stocks, fourth industrial revolution stocks. However, the other stuff, uh, you know, uh, we would say that, you know, we would avoid, even though there's going to be probably another leg to the rally because it, the, the selling just got so out of control. Yeah. I mean, yeah. When Boeing is down like 70% in a month, it's not going to stay there. You know, right. there, there'll be like a, there'll be short covering. Right, right. Yeah. And, you know, people are going to come and bid it up and it's, it's yeah. an index. It's in the indices. It's, it's going to get bid up. All right. So just want to, you know, make that clear. And, you know, once again, if you're looking for what to buy, New World Stocks, America 2.0 uh, Stocks, click on the strong hands above, takes you to uh, an invitation to subscribe through a video and just follow through and you'll get uh, one rep a report with uh, a stock on manufacturing, which we believe is the future of manufacturing. It's going to be important and this blacklist report as well. All right, let's do uh, 
cannabis uh, because we're starting to see now what we talked about last week, a rally starting to come through. Well, yeah, cannabis is kind of blowing up right now. Um, a lot of stores have stayed open and I just saw that uh, like it, sales in the US and Canada for recreational and medical marijuana are up like 40 to 50% from a year ago, which like a year ago was like major, still major um, bullish sentiment in pot stocks. So they were still uh, not even at 52 week highs yet. But now they're like, the prices are like 60, 70, 80% lower than that at least. Um, and we're seeing s still huge demand for these, for their products and the stocks aren't following yet. So the stocks still haven't kind of caught on to the fact that these companies aren't going to go out of business. Um, and we're seeing, like I said, some companies have, you know, reported lines out of their stores even farther back than where they, they had them when the companies first opened their doors, when, when pot was first legalized. So their sales are going to be through the roof. And I don't think that's really going to be an anomaly in the long run. I think they're going to stay up there. And I think, of course, more states are going to legalize. Eventually, it'll be legal everywhere. Um, and the U.S. especially is a huge market for this. Um, just because we're just really getting started over the past couple of years. This is a really budding industry. Yeah, I mean, uh, we look before getting on, MJ is up 9% uh, yeah. today. So, I mean, it's the first signs of demand coming in for uh, cannabis stocks. Uh, and then, you know, a couple of our stocks, one was up 40%, another up 7%. So, it's the first inclination that yeah. people are starting to, there's probably some short covering for sure. But then, for sure, there's also additional demand. And also, one of the stocks that, uh, that's in uh, the $10 million portfolio, I saw that, you know, uh, they, they said they're cutting costs, but they're, you know, I mean, they're priced like they're going bankrupt. Oh, yeah, a lot they of them are. are not going bankrupt. Like, some of these companies had, like, their market caps, which is the value of the whole company, was barely even more than what they had in cash in the bank. Right. That's how crazy it does. this pot stock sell-off has gotten. Right. I mean, you know, that's the nature of markets. However, I can say, I mean, to the folks that are watching that are in our service that I have had personally stocks that were down 90% come back and where I've made multiple hundred percent. Uh, yeah. Because if you buy them sometimes even a little bit early, you can go through a wave of like where the stock crashes. However, to the extent that the company is real, the business is real, the opportunity is real and the growth comes through, you can have phenomenal skyrocketing returns, even though you've timed it poorly. And that's yeah. because like, you know, I, I put up this tweet, uh, you know, maybe we'll, we'll get it up here uh, for a second about like, you know, potential sales in California from uh, um, New Frontiers Research. Uh, and, you know, I mean, you gotta see the projections, you know, and that's just, you know, and right. then they look at the transition to legal. The growth is here, the demand is there, if, if you can stick it out a little bit in these trades, uh, I believe you can make an enormous amount of money. Yeah, and there's this one company in the US that during all of this panic and everything, they're actually making acquisitions. So they're clearly in good financial health because they're spending money to acquire other companies while they're cheap. So that's yeah. a great sign too. And then no one is funding any more new cannabis companies because obviously when, when stocks crash, you know, nobody's interested yeah. in them anymore. However, the companies are doing the right things. They are, uh, they're sort of uh, making, right-sizing their companies to be able to make money, focusing on, on their particular opportunity, their particular niche. In general, they're doing everything that you would want them to. It's like, in other words, focus on your business, grow your business, focus on your market, do the right things, uh, and stop worrying about the stock price, which, you yeah. know, probably they were probably too worried about, you know, while, well, when it seemed like, everything was just gonna grow to the moon forever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. All right, so let's, uh, you know, we've done uh, Tesla, we've done uh, cannabis, we did the market. Let's do Bitcoin. So Bitcoin crashed at 39. I think the high was like nearly 7,000. Yeah, yeah, it's right up around seven now. Um, so almost twice as much from that bottom. And, you know, people, some people obviously sold, some might have had to if they got margin calls or something. That's usually what drops um, anything really that much uh, in, a, in a really short period of time, just complete panic. Um, but the people that bought that dip are a whole new wave or people that owned Bitcoin before, they want to buy more, which is great. But it also brought in a bunch of people who were waiting for that dip, 
who are now in for the long run. Um, so, you know, when that kind of thing happens, yeah, it's painful in the short term to see that happen, but it also is good for the long term because now you have this whole new layer of strong hand buyers that are, you know, as they say in Bitcoin, hodling for the long term. Um, and that just means more scarcity going forward because they're not going to sell. Yeah, and then you look at what the Federal Reserve is doing, uh, what, uh, which is that is making cash a lot less scarce than it was when Bitcoin crashed. I mean, there's, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if it'll enter, all of it will enter into the financial system. Some of it is clearly just going to be taken in and people want for safety. They want to feel good, you know, yeah. uh, that they have all this cash. However, it does sort of, you know, drive that idea that like, it really sits behind the creation of Bitcoin, which right. is, in other words, a, a currency that is uh, not issued by a government is completely finite uh, and works with a certain mathematical uh, formula, precision, uh, and is subject to, at least in terms of the amount of it that can be out there, no manipulation. Right, exactly. So, like, obviously, the simple math on that is the more dollars are out there, the, the cheaper a dollar is because it's less scarce. So the more everything else goes up relative to the dollar, including Bitcoin. That's right. I mean, so 21 million Bitcoin, that's the maximum that can be mined. Last time I checked on the halvening calendar, 18.3 million mines yes. so far. Uh, and as amazing as it sounds, it's going to take like, I don't know, like six years. I don't know, a lot of time to yeah. get remaining, like, you know, what left, which is like less than 3 million. Uh, and then come May, I believe it's May 20th approximately, is the halvening date. It's estimated, it's not known exactly, uh, where we go from, I believe, 12 and a half to six and a, six and a quarter uh, yep. Bitcoin uh, in terms of the reward uh, for, for solving uh, the particular mathematical puzzle uh, for, for Bitcoin. And uh, all of this uh, now makes, I believe, everything that we have been saying much, much more likely. In other words, Bitcoin hitting... I think it could go actually higher than 50,000 because I went and looked at a study uh, where it looked at the ha previous happenings and the greater the volatility that anticipates it, the bigger the run actually into the happening. Right. Uh, and, and then it also creates additional sort of scarcity of supply. So uh, we've put big numbers out there. I've said new highs by the happening and then, which is in May again of this year, and then a hundred, uh, you said 50K by year end, right? Yes. Well, yeah, 50K. I still feel very, very good about that. And uh, the nature of rising prices is that it also draws more people. And so that then creates really a, a huge bull market. And we have estimates from very credible people like Tim Draper that was very early into buying large amounts of Bitcoin. I believe is what, was it 200 million that he bid at auction? Yeah, he, yeah. yeah. Everything that was confiscated from the black market, he That's got right. all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so 200 million this dude put in and he running off a mathematical model says uh, over between 2023 and 2025 expects prices of somewhere between 250 and $400,000. Yeah. Right. And so um, we think that, you know, given what is going on, uh, we think that that that's probably, you know, pretty doable, pretty, that's pretty doable. Yeah, for sure. And it, Again, it doesn't sound like that could happen now, but you know, twenty thousand didn't sound like it was going to happen <laughs> when Bitcoin was at a hundred pre the last happening. So well, I, I can tell you that I remember first reading about Bitcoin, and I remember wanting to go put about a thousand dollars in, right? And so this was pretty soon after, like the the white paper came out. I remember reading about it in the New Yorker of all places, and so yeah. at the time, the only place to buy it was Mt. Gox. Yeah, which. Uh, which you know, I was such a scary looking website. I had no idea, you know, I had no idea where else to go. So like that was the place that was referenced in their article. Right. And uh, I remember I went to go put my debit card in um, and then I got scared off. I was like, I don't think I want like my account hacked, you know, and, and, and then eventually obviously Mt. Gox, Mt. Gox got hacked. Yeah. Uh, however, yeah. today you can go, you know, you can, uh, if you're part of Profits Unlimited, we've given you a way to buy into Bitcoin. Um, uh, that's there. So there's a, there's a stock way to do it. I want to give it away because uh, there's folks that are paying us for this. So if you want in on that as well, subscribe to Profits Unlimited, or you can go into Coinbase. There's there's other, but I, I mean, I, I don't know what the other big uh, exchanges are. Kraken, I guess in Europe, but in, in the US, it's mostly Coinbase, I think. 
Yeah, mostly Coinbase. Yeah. Oh, Square. Square also, the Cash App. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. you can you can buy Bitcoin through there. So that's a couple of places. All right, Ian, we've kind of come through uh, all the usual things that we do. Anything else that we want to say that we've skipped out on uh, that we want to tell folks? Uh, no, I think we covered it all. Yeah. So, I mean, on the stock market, we know it's gone up and we've gotten a lot of, you know, people that, you know, are constantly like, hey, Paul, like what's going to happen? You know, from the way we looked at it, this was a panic. And right. it looks like it's going to be a short, sharp, painful sort of, you know, probably a one or one and a quarter, you know, recession. And then we come out of it. And the stock market, just remember, uh, looks ahead, anticipates things. So we are still bullish, optimistic, and positive on all the things we usually talk about. But with that, Ian, let's close out this edition of the Ian Cash. Yeah, you go good. first, and I'll go last. All right, everybody. Happy Friday. Enjoy your weekend after this finally a bounce in the stock market. Hope everybody has a good weekend. And I am also going to say goodbye, and maybe I'll be on the Ian Cast again next week. Yes. All right, Ian. Bye. See you.